chequer flag is out for Marta Garcia, who holds on to take the win. For years, women have been breaking boundaries and defying expectations in the male-dominated world of motorsport. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. From a young age, girls have been drawn to the thrill and excitement of racing, but for far too long, they have been told that this isn't a sport for them. But these women have proved the naysayers wrong. They've shown that they have the skill, the drive and the determination to compete at the highest level of motorsport. They face challenges and obstacles along the way, but they have never given up. They push themselves to be faster, better and stronger than anyone else on the track. These women are more than just drivers. They're trailblazers, pioneers and champions. They're showing the world that women belong in motorsport and that they are here to stay. Jamie Chadwick wins the W Series Championship of 2021. So join us on this incredible journey as we explore the stories of these amazing women and celebrate their incredible achievements. This is Breaking Boundaries. This hasn't always been the case in motorsport. Back in the 50s through to the 80s, there were women in F1, but what happened? Did they leave on their own accord? Were they forced out? Or could they just not compete? Formula 1 is one thing for the girls. Visto che corro, giudicate voi. Perché questo è molto risport per le signorine. Perché io l'adoro, adoro l'automobilismo, adoro le macchine da corsa, mi piace la sensazione di guidare. E la signorina Lombardi in questo sport solamente come una bella bambola? No, no, io no, se volete giudicarmi voi, ma io ci tengo a essere un pilota e non ha fatto una bambola. It's the 1950s and the world of motorsport is dominated by men, but one woman is about to change all of that. Her name is Maria Teresa de Filippis, and she's the first woman to compete in Formula One. It's the 1958 Monaco Grand Prix, and Maria is about to make history. She entered five races in the 1958 and 59 seasons. Her best result was 10th, but not long after was discriminated against and left after the Monaco Grand Prix. After 15 years without any women in the category, another Italian, Lella Lombardi, competed in three seasons, from 1974 to 1976. She's classed as the best ever female driver in Formula One, finishing sixth in a race, but was awarded half points due to the race being suspended early. She is the only ever woman to score points in Formula One, even after almost 50 years. In 1976, a British driver by the name of Davina Gallica tried to qualify for the British Grand Prix. This was the only Formula One Grand Prix in which had multiple female racers, Lombardi and Gallica, but both failed to qualify. However, four years later in 1980, a South African Desiree Wilson became the only woman to win a Formula One race of any kind when she won at Brands Hatch in the British Aurora Formula One Championship on the 7th of April in 1980. As a result of this achievement, Wilson now has a grandstand at Brands Hatch named after her. She was the last woman to race in Formula One. The next woman to try and qualify for a Formula One race was Italian Giovanna Amati in 1992. She tried to qualify for three races but failed in all attempts. She was later replaced by the one and only Damon Hill. Without a doubt, Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport. However, there are many other categories within motorsport, such as rallycross, NASCAR and the IndyCar series, that have helped to captivate audiences around the globe. Michelle Mouton, a French rally driver, made history as the first woman to win a World Rally Championship event. She finished second in the overall championship standings in 1982, cementing her legacy as one of the greatest rally drivers of all time. Jude Kleidensmith, a German off-road racer, was the first woman to win the gruelling Dakar Rally in 2001. She had competed in numerous off-road racing events around the world and is known for a fearless driving style. Danica Patrick, an American former professional racing driver, was the first woman to lead the Indianapolis 500 and the first woman to win a major open wheel race in North America. 
She retired in 2018 after a successful career in NASCAR and IndyCar. Jamie Chadwick, a British racing driver, made history as the first champion of the all-female W Series. She is also a development driver for Williams Formula One team and has competed in various other motorsport events around the world. Tony Bridinger, an American stock car racing driver, made history as the first Arab American woman to compete in a NASCAR National Series event. She has won multiple races in the ARCA Menard Series and is known for her aggressive driving style. Esme Hawkey, a British racing driver, is the first woman to compete in the Porsche Super Cup Series. She has also competed in various other racing events around the world and is known for her impressive speed and skill. Their cars may not have been the fastest, but they had something that the others don't. Sheer determination. These women showed determination and skill, which would continue to make waves in the world of motorsport. Today, women continue to break boundaries in motorsport, but it all started with Maria Teresa de Filippis. We're here at Daytona Outdoor Karting in Tamworth. We're going to be speaking to some young and up and coming talent and see what got them into this amazing sport. Hi, my name's Jude. I'm a racing driver in the Super Champ Series at Daytona Tamworth here. My name's Dylan Deakin. I'm 15 and I'm racing in the Super Champs. Hi, hi, my name is Christina Harding. My name's Jake and Karting. 21st of April, my dad took me here for a practice session due to um, loving F1 and wanting to be a part of motorsport. I then just fell in love with it, really. Probably a birthday party, you know. <laughs> really? One of my birthday parties, fancy going karting, and then just enjoyed it, so started going a bit more regular, and then it's just progressing now. So my uh, social worker found out I was interested in racing, so it was like a appraisal thing. So if I did well at school or something, they go, we'd take you to Team Sport Crawley to do a race, and he got that way, that's how I got into it. Uh, I actually went to a birthday party once at an indoor track in Nottingham, and then since then I've sort of wanted to go back. Went back a few times sort of with a few mates and then started taking it a bit more seriously. Last season actually there was a girl who raced here called Evie and she was winning the championship all the way up to the second like second to last round in the sprint league and it was neck and neck in the final but I just managed to take it but she apart from that in our series, apart from in D-Max and stuff, there's not many women competing, no. Not a lot, um, but when we do see women, and we see women that have talent, uh, we, we, we are very encouraged to, and I take them, not under my wing, but I give them support. I do them like a, a man I would or any a young person. Um, I just try to encourage them a lot more and try to keep them in, because I feel like we do need more women, but we also need good women. I've raced against um, a few women back in 2019 and they were very competitive. Not many, to be honest. I've, I know one that was racing last season. At my site where I work, we do events called like lady night events, where ladies are only a welcome. So uh, only lady drivers, only lady workers, there's no men in the building, so they feel safe. And then, then we encourage them to do other events that we do. I mean, social media is always a good, powerful thing. Um, Maybe having more higher end series as well, like Formula Women, things like that. Maybe more of those will get more women attracted to it, I guess. Well, you could just get them a bit more encouragement because they might think they're not as welcome as men because they might think it's men's sport, but they are really welcome. Just sort of raising awareness. We don't really see many things adverts. That every advert you see for motorsport, there's usually men in it and there's not really much present. So I feel like if there were more women in adverts and stuff like that, or in actual displays on adverts and sort of anywhere in motorsport where it's put around, if there were more women involved, I feel like there'd be more people who would enter. I feel like the reason most people get into racing is because their friends do it and they get invited along and then they catch the bug. Obviously more promotion probably, yeah. main thing. Yeah because everyone can race really. In the high speed world of motorsport, women have always been a rare sight, but a new generation of female racers are breaking down the barriers and making their own mark on the track. Did you know that go-karting is the most popular entry level motorsport in the world? It's where drivers learn the fundamentals of racing from handling a vehicle to navigating hairpin turns. And for young girls, go-karting is especially important. It's where they can discover their passion for racing and develop their skills they need to succeed in this sport. We're here in Daytona and Tamworth and we're going to be speaking to Abby Sanders. 
is currently leading this race. And we can speak to her mom as well to talk about what it's like being a female in a man-dominated sport. Do I say hi? Is that weird? Hi, I'm Abby Sanders and I race at Daytona Tamworth. My name's Heather Sanders and I'm a parent of Abby Sanders and a brother also races as well, Ben. Not many. You get the odd one every now and then. It was actually a dad that started at club racing when he was a lot younger and then went on to National Super 1 level. Um, so the interest for both of the kids was the fact that it was watched at home and, and that they did it. A brother started when he was eight and we kind of knew then that she was going to be interested in, in going for it. I mean, it used to, it used to be quite a lot worse, but I don't know if I've got used to it or people are more used to women in motorsport now, but yeah, it's better now. Like before, they used to get the odd comments and looks and stuff. It's nerve wracking, it's always going to be nerve wracking. I think it, it, would, it does feel a bit more protective over Abby because she's a girl in a male dominated sport and you know, you, well you hear it, like even today you hear comments made, um, but she's quite resilient, but it's almost like she shouldn't have to be, but you kind of have to expect it. I think it's opening it up to women more. So having some events where, so, say for instance, Abby's friends who all know now that she does it, but they wouldn't know how to just come and have a go at it. Obviously it is expensive, but just to have some female events to, to get people to just try it and, and actually think, actually, no, I do like this. Is there any way I can do it? Um, because that's not something you know, they can do. And, it, and it, it is harder, obviously, like with the weight categories, because she's racing against males, she's got to weigh up a lot more. And that does affect how you drive the cart, depending on where the weight is. And so there is an advantage in that, disadvantage in that, but it's great that they can race together. It's more just having more ro role models and just getting women used to that this can be a sport that they can do and it's not just a male-dominated sport. I'll try not to shiver. Hi, my name's Amanda Tricker and I am the owner of TRX Motorsport. So TRX Motorsport is a company where we have a race team and a race academy. We also host endurance championships as well across the country and the objective is to basically take people from car to car. So they'll come with us to begin with, some will have some experience, some not and we kind of work on the ethos that everyone is welcome. We started karting uh, with my family about uh, just before lockdown and it was a passion of my sons and then became the whole families and um, yeah we just kind of became a little bit obsessed with it and uh, it's kind of grown from there from the indoor to now outdoor and we also have a race car as well we're going to be taking out soon as well so trying to do the progression uh, right the way through. I don't have the answer um, obviously I know there's a lot of bigger companies that are doing more. I know like the, the indoor karting of Team Sport, they're doing the girls on grid. Obviously the FIA are doing quite a lot as well. You've got the Formula Women Academies. There's a lot of academies that are specifically for women, which is, is definitely helping. Um, we're doing the same where we'll, for those that aren't comfortable racing with the men, we'll be growing a female academy for those that want that, but only if it's something that's needed. I think it's, it's a bit of a circle, isn't it? Because once, you, once more women are involved, I think people won't see gender anymore. But in order to get them more involved, we need to change what's, what's already been to have people have that, that interpretation. I'd say, if I had the answer, <laughs> that'd be wonderful. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's more, it probably is more seeing more women uh, in the spotlight with social media, for example. I mean, today's a great example. There's obviously a female racer on the podium today, which once that goes around, that hopefully, especially for younger racers that um, for, for younger racers that don't know any different, they're not involved with the girl and boy side of side of life really. Um, it's them coming through when they're young enough that that's not going to play such a major part. I think the older you are, you're more aware of things. Earlier this year, I got to speak to two Formula E drivers, Sam Bird and Sergio Sete Camera. Formula E is an all-electric racing series. It's fast-paced and it has tight street circuits and amazing engineering with even better drivers. 
15 races, 11 teams and 22 drivers, all competing for one championship. Sam Bird is a world-renowned driver with over 18 years experience in single-seater racing. In his Formula E career, he's had 10 wins and 25 podiums. Sergio, on the other hand, is a young and up-and-coming Formula E driver who test drove for Red Bull and Alpha Tauri. In 2020, he had a promising Formula 2 career, finishing fourth in his best season. They spoke about what can be done. From Formula E's perspective, but also in general most sport, to get more women into this sport. My name is Sam Bird, and I'm a racing driver for Jaguar TCS Racing in the Formula E World Championship. My name is Sergio Setecamara. I'm a Brazilian racing driver, I'm driving in the FIA Formula E World Championship, and currently driving for NEO Racing. What does it mean to be a Formula E driver? So, firstly, what does it mean to be a racing driver? It's what I've always wanted to do with my life. Ever since I was a little kid growing up, I wanted to be a racing driver. I wanted to go fast, I wanted to get paid to be a sportsman and I'm so blessed, so humbled that I've been able to achieve that dream. The dream of course for me now is to try and win the Formula E World Championship so that's something that's very special to me, would be very special to me. To be a Formula E driver, to represent this as a brand, as a series is great. You know we are accelerating change, we are a catalyst for change. The world is in a state right now where it needs to be shocked into getting into electric mobility. What better way than starting a world-class racing championship to showcase electric mobility and help manufacturers improve their electric mobility? How do I get into this industry? I mean, gosh, through go-karting from an early age, working my way up through the ranks and then persevering through difficult times, good times, just improving and learning and understanding my trade, getting through single seaters, getting up to reserve driver in Formula One with Mercedes um, and just never giving up. You know, if you've got a dream, give it absolutely everything, leave no stone unturned until you've absolutely exhausted every last avenue. Um, but in life, I think it's the same in every single aspect of life. If you've got a dream, give it your best shot. You don't want to wake up later on in life thinking, what if? So in, in Brazil, there's a big culture, uh, motorsport culture, especially Formula One. We've got, we've had great, great drivers al al along the years. Senna, Nelson Piquet, Fittipaldi, many others. And even in my generation, we had Barrichello and Massa. So naturally, there's a lot of influence. People watch Formula One. And uh, that's where my passion came from, watching with my father and my grandfather. And then started in karting slowly. And I, it's crazy how quickly things take a serious turn and all of a sudden you're traveling to compete and taking part in racing, but that's how it started. If you're willing to sacrifice everything, you're willing to go to the gym, you're willing to do the emails, go to see sponsors, travel all hours, sacrifice your your teenage years and, and not go out with your friends and, and be a bit of a loner at times, unfortunately. If you're willing to do all these things because you love what the potential end goal could be, to be a paid racing driver and you want to do it because you love racing not for money not for fame you want to be a racing driver because you love to race your racing car that's the most important aspect of it if you're willing to do those things then yeah you can do it how can we get more women into motorsport i mean formula e is actively doing the girls on on track at the moment so we are actively inviting young women to to be a part of the series but it's a really tricky question because as of yet and it's, it's as of yet, we haven't had a female racing driver that has been able to compete with the people in this championship. But that's not to say that it can't happen or that it won't happen. It needs one young woman to be able to compete and it will open the floodgates. She will inspire thousands of young women. And that time is, it's going to happen, it will come, but when, I'm not sure. And there's been a lot of adv advancements with women in motorsports. In the last, especially the last five years. Uh, I think 10 years ago there were barely zero programs in place to incentivize women to, to, to join the sports and now it's completely different. You can see women uh, getting a lot of sponsorship, there's series dedicated to, 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 to women in sports, uh, a series like Extreme E where a lot of the, if not all of the, of the pairings have at least a female in the car. So it has taken a massive turn and if it continues in this rate, I'm sure there'll be plenty of women of motorsports in, in 10 years. And things are actually happening, which is rare in this, in this sport. A lot of times people speak about it, there's a lot of blah, 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 but there's no action taken. And 
With women in motorsport, it has been different. There's actually practical things being done. But despite the growing number of female racers, women still face challenges in the male-dominated world of motorsport. But these women are determined to change that. They're breaking records and shattering stereotypes, proving that gender has no place on the track. And it all starts with the humble go-kart. So next time you see a group of young girls racing around a track, remember that they could be the next generation of female racers, changing the face of motorsport forever. Hi, I'm Katia. Um, I currently work at Sky as a platform QA operator, and I also run social media platforms called Women Behind the Wheel. And from that, I also have a documentary, which is now award-winning. So I always kind of watch on and off races with my dad growing up, but I think the release of Drive to Survive and Lockdown, I kind of really got into it there. because I feel like I need to kind of know the drivers and their personalities to be able to support them because I don't want to support like a bad person who's not very really nice. So Drive to Survive really helped me kind of connect more of the drivers on that level. I think it's good because it's given everyone a whole new audience, especially a younger audience and a more female audience. But I think they do dramatise a lot and for that it's kind of hard for real F1 fans, well I say real F1 fans, but F1 fans who know all the ins and outs. It's kind of difficult to watch because you're like, mm, well that's not right and that's dramatised and they actually both get on really well. So I think there's good and there's bad points but I think it's mostly good because it's given F1 this whole new audience, especially like how big it's got in America for example. There's still a really long way to go, but recently in the last like five years, there has been a real progressive change. So that is good, but there is still a long way to go. And there was things that I learned in the documentary that I didn't necessarily know before, like somehow, like how the fans feel. I think that's a real perspective that no one really talks about when it comes to women in motorsports. And yeah, just hearing from the drivers and how they think, yes, there has been a change, but fans think, no, there hasn't really been a change. I think possibly the next 10, 15 years, if things like W Series and F1 Academy work. Because right now, the women they're getting into F1 Academy, they're roughly around the right ages, but I feel like you need to really work from younger kids when the boys that will go to F1 start karting, you need to get the girls in there too. Um, so that's why I think like 10, 15 years, so it, you can really help the young girls starting now to then be able to reach F1. We've explored the history and we've explored the future of women in motorsport. But we still ask the same question. How can we get more women into motorsport? You have to show young girls that they can be racing drivers and they can be engineers because when you look at F1 right now, there's barely any women in it. And I think that was the problem for me, for example, is if you can't see it growing up, you can't see women there, you just assume it's a men's sport. That's why organisations and people like Girls on Track are really good because they are targeting primary school girls to kind of come out to the races and do events to really show um, Formula One and most sports can be for them as well. We still have a long way to go, but one thing is for certain, the next generation of female drivers are here.